Alright fellow RC enthusiasts, and welcome to another quick hit tech tip from Spectrum with Tom this time. Um, so in this video I wanted to go over some troubleshooting tips for binding. So what is binding? Binding is the process that connects your receiver to your Spectrum transmitter of choice. So there are, um, so there are surface receivers, which we have on the left hand side here and then there are air receivers so the first troubleshooting tip is to make sure that you are using the correct receiver for the correct transmitter so like i was saying we've got surface for that side and then air for the other side so you use that for like a dx6 or dx8 or something with these sticks on it and then these ones are in general for transmitters with a wheel on them and a trigger. There are some exceptions to that, but for the most part, that is the case. Another troubleshooting tip that you'll want to be aware of is to look at the receiver and to see what modulation is on the receiver and compare that with the specs of your transmitter. So let's get rid of some of these guys and we'll do a quick comparison of what we have on the table here. All right, so there is a big difference between these two receivers. This is the older SR300 receiver, and this is an SR215 receiver, current receiver, one that we sell today. The SR300 is a DSM protocol receiver, and then this one is a DSMR protocol receiver. So you need to make sure that the receiver that you have is compatible with your transmitter. So like our DX3 that we have here is a DSMR transmitter, and this DSM receiver which is an older protocol, it's not DSM-2, it's not DSM-R, it's not DSM-X, it is DSM, will not function, it will not bind with the current lineup of transmitters. There is some exceptions to that, whereas a DSM-R transmitter might be backward compatible to a DSM-2 receiver, but they won't be backward compatible with a DSM receiver. So just look at the specs of that if you're having trouble binding, just to make sure that the two are compatible. Another thing about compatibility is that between our SR215 and let's say an AR6110T receiver. So there are two difference between, differences between these and that is that one is a air receiver and a surface receiver. Surface receivers use the DSMR protocol or the surface protocol that we have going on currently. The surface protocol, even though they're both spectrum protocols, is specifically designed for surface applications. And then air is designed for air applications. So likewise, the air receivers will only bind to air transmitters, like a stick radio. And then the surface receivers will only bind to a, a wheel transmitter or a surface transmitter. So keep that in mind. So let's real quickly go over how to bind. It's, it's very simple. You'll have a either a bind port, like this receiver here has a bind slash bat port, where you'll take a bind plug, which usually comes with the receiver and your transmitter. If you've been doing RC for a little while and flying Spectrum, you probably have a bunch of these laying around. They're not specific to the receiver. They are universal. They are simply just a jumper that is jumping the negative pin to the signal pin on your receiver. More on that later. But you'll essentially just plug it in and then apply power to your receiver. Now power can come from a number of, number of different sources. I'm gonna use a two cell LiPo and I'm just gonna plug in to any open port. If you're using an ESC, it's going to get power from the ESC in most cases. So that'll come from the throttle port. I'm just gonna go ahead and for the sake of demonstration, plug in my power to the throttle port. All right, and then once you have power and the bind plugs in, you should see a blinking light. And then on your transmitter, such as our DX3 here, you'll either have a bind button on the side, which I have here. So you'll either hold the button and turn it on and it'll blink and it'll attach itself, it'll bind itself to the receiver. Or if you have a DX5C or something other, a computer transmitter, there'll be a bind menu. Let's go ahead and just bind it to this guy. What you'll do is you'll turn on the radio and then you'll click on the roller and you're going to go down to a menu that says bind 
four for it'll sometimes it will say bind slash frame rate not really concerned about that at this point and then we'll click bind and then it will attempt to bind to the receiver and this brings us to our problem number one troubleshooting problem number one so if you see bind failed or if your dx3 or something like that doesn't bind to it normally what that means is that we are too close to the receiver so what we'll have to do is just leave that we're going to unplug power from our receiver oh. and then plug it back in and we're going to put some distance between the receiver and our transmitter so let's try it again so I'm gonna move that receiver over there. I'm gonna keep my radio over here. Normally what I do is I get a good four to six feet between the transmitter and the receiver and we'll bind again. Oh, to bind. Go up there and let's try it again. Yep, there it goes. You'll see DSMR and then the frame rate that has been selected. And now you're bound. So that is troubleshooting step number one, to put some space between your transmitter and the receiver and the model to get less saturation between the two. Well, essentially what that is, is it's oversaturation. If they're too close to each other, then the two signals coming from them are just so strong that it has a hard time of latching onto each other. All right. Another thing to look at is to make sure that you have the polarity correct on the receiver. Each of these pins here have a polarity to them. And it might be hard to see here, but I'll pull up a picture for you guys to see. There is a S, or what looks like a wave sign, for signal, for the signal pin. And then the middle pin is always power. And then the outside pin is the ground, or the negative. So if you have servos, your power plugged in, your ESC plugged in, and one of them is backwards, it will not bind. It may not even power up. You may get like a faint light or something like that. So just make sure that you have the polarity plugged in properly. And just to kind of demonstrate that, I'll grab a servo. So here's a servo here. Just to make sure that you have it plugged in properly. I can plug this in backwards. So this is improper. This is my steering servo plugged in upside down or backwards, right? So I've got the negative, which is usually the darkest colored wire. The positive's always in the middle, so that helps you keep it from being cross polarity. It won't damage the, the receiver plugging it in backwards like this, but, uh, and, and then the signal is on the bottom pin. And the right way with this particular receiver, and like I said, make sure you look at the diagram on the receiver to double check. The right way to plug it in would be like this, with the signal wire, the lightest colored wire facing towards the label. Some receivers aren't that way, so you just gotta make sure that you are plugging it in the right way if you're having problems binding. So the next thing you're to look at if you're having trouble binding is to make sure that the antenna is intact. Now there are some receivers that have a built-in now there are some receivers that have a built-in receiver antenna like the AR410 here. So it has a PCB, or what I like to call an antenna-less design. So it has a PCB antenna. Those are great because they're not gonna get damaged that way. But with this one, it has this antenna here. And there are two parts to this particular antenna. There is the active element at the end, and then the sheath along the edge, or along the, the length of the antenna. If this active element is damaged, or if it's been shortened, then you might have trouble with reception and binding. If this sheath is damaged or kinked and it has breaks in it, again, you might have reception issues or it may not bind. And then lastly, let's talk about some of our uh, receivers that have stabilization and gyros built in. So some of these receivers, namely really the AR636 that we have the most issues with, or we, have, we get the most questions on, the 636 or the 6386A, is you bind it, it seems like it bound, your radio said it bound, but it still doesn't have any kind of servo outputs or motor output. Normally what that means is that the receiver is not mounted in the orientation that it is calibrated to, or that the plane, let's say you bought a bind and fly plane that came with one of these receivers, the plane needs to be on its wheels. That's the big thing. So a lot of times you'll set up on a stand in your plane and uh, it'll be upside down, you'll plug in the battery and it won't work. 
and that's because it needs to be on its wheels. It needs to see the horizon and everything calibrated when that initial power up for it to be able to send out a signal. It's a whole safety thing and it's part of the gyro setup and initialization. <sighs> Same thing with like the AVC receivers like we have here, our SR6100 AT. AVC receivers need to be sitting still, still and motionless for a brief period of time before they'll initialize. So that makes sure that is working. 